welcome friends in the name of Jesus. Uh, this week makes um, a pivotal moment in our fight against COVID-19, doesn't it? We've we've heard that both uh, from the Prime Minister and from the First Minister that a roadmap out of lockdown has been set. And whatever your thoughts on that, it's just good to hear, isn't it, that uh, in days ahead, life will return to some sort of normality, whatever that may look like. I know I'm personally pleased to hear that uh, there's a possibility that we may be able to gather for worship at Easter. We'll just have to keep watching and listening and praying. Uh, I just pray that that will become a reality and that once again we can gather in God's house and worship together and be in fellowship with one another. I will of course keep you apprised of the situation through our newsletter. Self-denial. Today we will see the fourth video about the Salvation Army's work around the world, uh, today focusing on the Philippines. Uh, and next Sunday we will give time in our online worship to consider making that financial contribution to the overseas development work of the Salvation Army. Um, envelopes have been sent out to those who uh, receive the written resource by post and uh, if you would like one because you receive it on email then just let me know and i will email i will post one out to you with pleasure uh, during that service next week on the 7th of march uh, there will be a short time for us to consider what we uh, would like to contribute to that altar service appeal uh, as obviously we can't do that in person I'll give more details about how that can happen next week in the written resource. And uh, on behalf of the people that are going to benefit from your giving around the world, and remember this is a, an international thing, so even the poorest, most underdeveloped countries where the Salvation Army works hold uh, a self-denial altar service and contribute to that pot of money that will support uh, the work of the Salvation Army around the world. I just want to give thank yous out to you, uh, people of Kakodi, as you consider that in the days to come. Lent, I hope you're finding the prayer resource bag and the Lent lunch gatherings helpful for those who have been able to join us. Thank you once again to Leanne and to Rachel for their contributions in that way. And uh, this Wednesday, we're looking forward to Judy sharing her thoughts on events up to Easter. All are welcome and the Zoom details are in the written resource. Um, Lent began, didn't it, on Ash Wednesday, 17th of February, and it marks 40 days of prayer and fasting up to Easter. And to help you with your own personal devotions, there's some more resources, uh, some links on the internet to uh, resources that might help you to pray and to fast and to self-examine uh, as we approach Easter. Uh, prayer on the 5th of March, it's the World Day of Prayer. Um, get ready to join the global wave of prayer for justice and peace. Again, there are links on the uh, written resource to resources that you can use if you'd like to participate. And this year they've been prepared by women in the Re Republic of Vene Ve I can't say it. Vane Vanuata. That's my best attempt, sorry. Um, and finally, a grant for our work providing meals has been given to us from the local council and that will help provide, us, provide the food, the cleaning, the takeaway cartons, the PPE, the utilities that uh, are used. We just want to say thank you to the council for supporting us in that way. Oh, sorry, one more thing. On the uh, written resource, there's a reminder that this year's Helping Hand Appeal, that many in our Home League support and others in the core uh, this year are helping farmers in Zimbabwe to feed um, the families and their communities and again more information can be found using that link and really is finally appointments you will be glad to know that I wasn't on the appointments change list well I hope you're pleased to know anyway um, but you have me for a, at least another year I hope um, um, however Majors Alan and Carol Young our divisional mission labellers will be moving in July uh, to South Sea Corps and uh, our loss is very much their gain. Many of you know Carol and Alan. Uh, they're particularly important to me in my journey 
um, enrolling me as a soldier in the Salvation Army and also installing me now at Two Corps as an officer. And so I just want to say thank you to God for them and uh, pray that their future ministry will be blessed. Let's pray together. Father God, we once again take a, a moment to reflect on how great and awesome and powerful and wonderful you are. How you created the planets, the stars, the moons, yet created the smallest of creatures. Father, in these days, we want to especially thank you for the creation around us because in the strange sort of way during this pandemic our eyes have been opened to the beauty of your creation creation and your wonders so lord this morning as we gather to worship in uh, an online way or through a written resource we know lord that you will use these tools for the glory of your kingdom and Father, as we consider today what it means to be an evangelist or to have evangelism as one of our values, we pray, Father, that you will open our ears and hearts and minds to your truths, that you will remind us afresh of how great and glorious you are and how we are called to serve you. Thank you, Father, and bless us, we pray. And in turn, may our worship bless your holy name. In the name of Jesus, I pray these things. Amen. Well, today we look at our second value, evangelism. If I was to ask you what you think of or understand it to be, what is evangelism? I wonder what you would say. Do you think of it as open air ministries with the gospel being shouted through a, a loud hailer and brass bands playing? Or do you think of it as missionaries travelling to distant lands, sharing the gospel with people? Or perhaps you think of it as having a chat over a, a cup of coffee with a friend and, and just sharing your faith on a one-to-one -one basis. Well, all of these would be good examples of evangelism in action. But as we shared last week, when it comes to our values, it's not what we do, but who we are. Are we people who proclaim the gospel through our words, actions, thoughts and deeds? What does it mean to be an evangelist? So once again, today we will look at what the Bible tells us about the value of evangelism and what impact this has on us as disciples. But first, we sing together a song that uh, asks the straightforward questions. Who is on the Lord's side? Who will serve the king? Who will be his helpers, other lives to bring? Who will leave the world's side? Who will face the foe? Who is on the Lord's side? For him will go. And uh, we'll sing this song of praise together just now.
what great words master thou will keep us by thy grace divine always on the lord's side savior always thine is that your testimony this morning is that you what you profess to be someone on the lord's side someone who isn't in it for your own glory or fortune or gain someone who is free someone in god's army someone who knows the victory over sin death and evil is secure are these truths that you believe in are you on the lord's side if the answer to these is yes then as we worship this morning keep in mind these uh, truths that we must share with our families and with our friends and with our neighbors and with even the stranger we're going to use uh, our time of prayer this morning to focus on the idea of sharing the good news and our next song reminds us of this tell out the wonderful story tell it wherever you go tell of the king and his glory tell how he loves us so we sing this song together and then you'll be invited to share in some shared prayers that follow We're going to share in prayer together and I would invite you to say the men and women's and all parts as they come up on the screen. Let's pray. Almighty God, please give me the confidence to preach the gospel at all times. Help me to be firm and determined to preach your good news under whatever condition. Anoint me and make me a useful instrument to harvesting plentiful souls into your kingdom alleluia jesus reigns 
He is the source of the gospel and no force on earth can stop his movement. Hallelujah. I am a servant of Jesus Christ who is commissioned to preach the gospel since Jesus could not be stopped from achieving his salvation objective I cannot be stopped from preaching the gospel as well. Father, I want to preach your gospel. Please teach me how to do so. Give me confidence to share your good news with unbelievers so that they too can become saved and a part of your family. Anoint me to freely extend the light of your gospel to both the reached and unreached parts of our community our nation and our world. Please let your light shine through me so that many people can enter your kingdom. Today I receive your grace and anointing to preach the gospel by faith. Empower me through your Holy Spirit to preach the gospel and expand your kingdom. Let all of Satan's efforts to frustrate your call to spread the good news of the faith of the gospel fail. Let oppositions against your gospel and opposition against my willing servant to it be frustrated. Let your Holy Spirit enrich my words with your blessing and grace so that the voice of Jesus is heard by all. Lord Jesus, please increase my faith to stand firm with the task of evangelism. Enable me to preach your gospel fearlessly and ceaselessly. Please enable me to be your true ambassador and let me bring huge rewards to your kingdom. For in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. everyone hope you're all okay and um, today we're going to look a bit of the theme of evangelism and telling our story to other people and what that might look like <clears throat> now we're going to use some candles here and this candle we're going to light it and we're going to use this candle as jesus And as we've read in the Bible, Jesus is the light of the world. And also when we invite Jesus into our life, we can become a light for Jesus. So when we get to know about Jesus, he will start to shine on us. And we can become a light for him. Now evangelism just means telling people about Jesus, which we can all do. And when we start to do that, we can spread the light of Jesus onto the next person. Who then might then tell someone else and spread it on. And that chain can keep going. And if a person just tells one more person about Jesus, we can start to build lots of different people shining their lights for Jesus. So if you're this person here and Jesus is shining his light in you, who are you going to tell? about Jesus so that his light can then shine through them and continue this chain. Who are you going to start? And remember you don't have to just tell one person but if we each told one person it would spread just like it did here. But if we each told maybe two or three it would start to spread more. So we'll have a little think about who you're going to tell. Who are you going to let see your light shine for Jesus and who are you going to help shine a light for Jesus? Hello and welcome to the fourth of our films for this year's Self-Denial Appeal.
This week I'll be talking to Melinda Boone in the Philippines Territory. Melinda is now based at Divisional Headquarters, but she's worked in anti-human trafficking and modern slavery for the best part of a decade. She features in the Salvation Army's Helping Hand Appeal films from last year. While self-denial money doesn't directly support anti-human trafficking work, it does help fund some of the infrastructure that makes it possible. That means people like Melinda can visit groups, including CORE, so that people are more aware of the risks to themselves, their children and their wider family. And the risks are very real. When wages are low and jobs are scarce, the offer of good money for working abroad is difficult to resist. The reality is often forced labour and exploitation. Her team also supports survivors of trafficking as they return home and reintegrate with their families. Sounds to me like Melinda's got a lot on her plate, but it turns out that's not all she does. Hi, Major Melinda. C can you hear us? Yeah. Hello. How are you? I'm doing really well, thanks. How are you? And where are you? I'm here in General Santos City. That is somewhere in South Cotabato, in the province of South Cotabato, in the Philippines. So I am here, um, the Divisional Secretary for Program and Youth in Mindanao Island Division, Philippine Territory. Wow, that is a really long title. I hope you can get that on a badge somehow. That... <laughs> <laughs> so can you tell me a bit about your, what your role involves? Yeah, so... As a um, divisional secretary for program, I look. Uh, I, I am the overseer of the core program in the division, as well as in the youth department. And I have also an additional role as the national contact person for modern slavery and human trafficking. So that is uh, another challenging role. Twenty twenty has been a big year for. For our world. What's it been like on your side of the planet in Philippines? Yes, um, the COVID-19 pandemic, pandemic really brings um, dramatic change in the way we used to it. Uh, like for example in the core, especially here in Mindanao, because not all of our comrades have internet connection. And we only use a messenger, you know, just for text, we don't have face-to-face -face worship, especially for um, youth activities because 18 below are not allowed to go out in their homes. Okay, people under the age of 18 are not allowed out of their homes. Is that what you said? Yeah, below 18 they should stay at home from March until now. That is one of the government restrictions. So we we have also what we call now Sunday lockdown. So nobody is allowed to go out every Sunday. So meaning to say we don't have worship on Sunday, but we rely on online house worship. But this December, we start now the face-to-face -face with 50% um, of the congregation can attend. Well, that's good that things might be easing. What's the impact of the coronavirus pandemic been on um, modern slavery uh, and, and human trafficking? Yeah, our Department of Justice have recorded almost threefold cases, especially on online sexual exploitation um, of children. So our cases really uh, has a dramatic rise up. So we are uh, right now there is um, there is an ongoing online awareness campaign about online sexual exploitation to protect the family, our children, you know, so most of their time are on internet. Yeah. So it's great to see the Philippines really spearheading the army's uh, response to this in, in, your, in your part of the world. What, what does resilience mean to you um, in these days? Yeah, we Filipinos are really resilient people. <laughs> Just recently, we have this typhoon Ulysses that damages a lot of um, regions, especially in national capital regions, where under a lot of floods. And really, it is so hard, but then we have this smiling spirit that we can still smile amidst of storms, amidst of many troubles that is happening surrounds us. 
that's really encouraging uh, to us. What would you say the things that you're learning about yourself and life because of the coronavirus pandemic? You learn a lot. When I was in my core, in that little core, I have a lot of vegetables garden at the back. So every Monday, I, I, I go around with my comrades and bring them some vegetables. And our neighbors who are also struggling for their daily needs, so they will also knock to my door and said, oh, uh, Major, can I have this? <laughs> can I ask for your papaya, for your other vegetables? Because we need to survive. And that's just really, I, I am thankful for that um, opportunity, you know, to extend help and also to, um, to show practical love to my people because we are also challenged, <laughs> but still we cannot stop helping others. Yeah. So we're just really grateful that um, we could have this time together all the way from London to the Philippines. Yeah, God bless you and God bless the Philippines Territory. Yeah, thank you so much. It is an opportunity and I'm so happy to be part of what you're also doing. God bless you, Captain Ben. Thank you too. Okay, bye. Bye. <laughs> In next week's film, I'll be making a call to Pakistan and talking to Fozia Columbus. At the start of today's worship, I asked you the question, what would you say evangelism is? And uh, how can we claim and incorporate evangelism into our values, if that's going to be one of them? And what does the Bible say? about evangelism. Well, turning to a Bible dictionary, I found these words, the proclamation of the good news of Jesus Christ, which arise, arises naturally from believers' love for God and appreciation of all that God has done for them. The New Testament stresses the importance of evangelism and provides guidance as to how it should be carried out. And then another Bible dictionary says, evangelism focuses on the proclaiming of the good news of the coming of the kingdom of God in Christ, including the forgiveness of sins and the hope of eternal life through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Well, evangelism can be seen as an, an active calling of people, you and me, to respond to the message of grace and commit ourselves to God in Jesus Christ. While the word evangelism does not actually occur in the Bible, it is woven into its very fabric of the scriptures. Despite its uh, obvious importance, a, a wide range of opinions exist in defining what it means and what it should include. Definitions range from the extremely narrow to the extre extremely broad. The word itself is derived from the Greek word euangelion, uh, meaning gospel or good news. And the, the verbal form of the Greek evangelizo, for, forgive me, unlike Rachel, I am not very good with my Greek, uh, means to bring or to announce good news. And it's these words that occur some 55 times, uh, particularly in Acts chapter eight, which we will take a look at in a moment. And they're normally translated to the various forms of to preach. Put at its simplest, evangelism has to do with the proclamation of the message of good news found in the gospel. Well, let's share some scriptures from Acts that uh, see this idea of evangelism in action. Turn with me, will you, to Acts chapter 8. Uh, find your scriptures, find the book of Acts, and uh, look to chapter 8. And we're going to read from the fourth verse right up to verse 35. This is the uh, NIV version. You, of course, can read it in uh, your own scriptures, the ones that uh, speak to you the most. 
Acts chapter 8 verses 4 to 35. Those who had been scattered preached the word wherever they went. Philip went down to a city in Samaria and preached the Messiah there. When the crowds heard Philip and saw the signs being performed, they all paid close attention to what he said. For with shrieks impure spirits came out of many, and many who were paralysed or lame were healed. So there was great joy in that city. Now for some time a man named Simon had preached sorcery in the city and amazed all the people of Samaria. He boasted that he was someone great and all the people, both high and low, gave him their attention, exclaimed, This man is rightly called the great power of God. They followed him because he had amazed them for a long time with his sorcery. But when they believed Philip, as he pro proclaimed the good news of the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptised, both men and women. Simon himself believed and was baptised, and he followed Philip everywhere astonished by the great signs and miracles he saw. When the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they went, sent Peter and John to Samaria. When they arrived, they prayed for the new believers that they, that they might receive the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit had not yet come on any of them. They had simply been baptised in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John placed their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. When Simon saw that the Spirit had been given by the laying on of the hands of the apostles, he offered them money and said, Give me also this ability so that everyone on whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. Peter answered, May your money perish with you, because you thought you could buy <clears throat> the gift of God with money. You have no part or share in this ministry because your heart is not right before God. Repent of this wickedness and pray to the Lord in the hope that he may forgive you for having such a thought in your heart. For I see that you are full of bitterness and captive to sin. Then Peter answered, Pray to the Lord for me so that nothing you have said may happen to me. After they had after they had further proclaimed the word of the Lord and testified about Jesus, Peter and John returned to Jerusalem, preaching the gospel in many Samaritan villages. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Go south to the road, the desert road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out and on his way he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of all the treasuries of Kandak which means Queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship and on his way home was sitting in his chariot reading the book of Isaiah, the prophet, and the spirit of told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you are reading? Philip asked. How can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. This is the passage of scripture the eunuch was reading. He was led like a lamb, uh, like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shearer is silent. So he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, Tell me, please, who is the prophet talking about, himself or someone else? Then Philip began with, what, with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. Two things strike me as we read through that passage. Firstly, proclaiming or preaching the good news of the gospel was at the heart of what Philip was called to do. It was Philip's willingness to go and tell people about Jesus and the good news of the gospel and his obedience resulted in, in many getting to know the Lord, their lives transformed and we just see one snapshot of that with this Ethiopian 
eunuch. And I find it interesting it was in Samaria that this took place, a, a place hated by the Jews, um, a place that was rejected by the established religion of that region. Yet, yet God sent Philip to go and preach or evangelise in that area. You know, as we, we ad adapt to our new community, God is giving us a great opportunity to evangelise, to be evangelists, to embody the value of evangelism. Interestingly, John Knox cried, give me Scotland or I die. And John Wesley declared, the world is my parish. We, as a church, have been given a community to share the good news with a wider community. But we have also been given a front line of our own to share the good news of Jesus with. Rachel reminded me this week of a course that she's just been on, um, an excellent course that I'd had the privilege of attending for the last three years called Frontline. And it challenged me to think about how we evangelise and who uh, is on our front line individually, who we can share the good news with. And everyone has one. Everyone has a front line that they can be an evangelist to. Those you live with, those who you work with, those who might you might share a car journey with your hairdressers, your your health visitors in their various forms, uh, the families that have come to us in this time of meal provision, our parent and toddlers, so many front lines and you will have your own. And in these places and with these people, God gives us the ability to share our testimony of what he has done for us and what he's doing for us in our lives right now. You know, our, our testimony is such a, a powerful tool for building God's kingdom. No one can take it away from us. No, can, no one can refute it. And we are fortunate in this country to have the freedom to speak out, the freedom of speech. I want to ask you this morning, do you have a testimony of how you came to know Jesus? Could you tell someone, like Philip in our reading, of the good news of what God is doing in your life? Could you explain the scriptures to someone of Jesus coming to redeem the world? Being able to succinctly share your faith in a, a couple of minutes might be your way of being an evangelist. Now, don't get me wrong, some people are called to be evangelists they are given the gift the spiritual gift of evangelism and it comes to them uh, by the power of God and is is used in mighty ways we look to people like don't we like Billy Graham uh, and William Booth uh, and how God used them in really powerful ways but he also wants to use us in our simple daily life to share the good news of Jesus to share the hope of the gospel. And there is no time more needing of the gospel than right now and where people are at. I want to challenge you this morning to try and to speak out or maybe even just to write out your personal testimony of your walk with Jesus in two or three hundred words. That's two or three minutes worth. See how you get on. See if you can put down in words what it means, this gospel of good news that we proclaim. Secondly, proclaiming the gospel's not a solo job. You know, throughout this passage, we see the Spirit of God at work. In the opening verses, we see how the Holy Spirit was driving out demons and healing people. Later, we see Peter and John come and lay hands on new believers to receive the Holy Spirit. We see Philip being obedient to the prompting of God's Spirit and heading south and catching up with um, an Ethiopian eunuch. 
And this reminds me that the, the Holy Spirit is the one who we obey and rely on for our evangelism. For to do it on our own or in our own way, in our own time and in our own strength would be futile. So if we are going to have the value of evangelism, oh, how much we need the Holy Spirit. Philip jumped on board, didn't Philip jumped on board the, the, the chariot and literally sat down with someone and shared his own story, emphasising the scriptures and explaining them to the eunuch and who then led him to Christ. Again, I so much believe that that's Philip's obedience to the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit giving him the words to speak out the good news of the gospel. It's another reminder that we, we, mustn't be obedient, we must be obedient to God's call and willing to let him take full control, of, especially of our words at times. Author and pastor Dr. Leighton Ford once said on the topic of evangelism, Jesus was born in a borrowed manger. He preached from a borrowed boat. He entered Jerusalem on a borrowed donkey. He ate the last supper in a borrowed upper room and he was buried in a borrowed tomb. Now he asks to borrow the lives of Christians to reach the rest of the world. If we do not speak, if we do not let the Holy Spirit speak through us, then he is dumb, then Christ is dumb and silent. Are we willing to loan our bodies and our voices to the Holy Spirit in order that God's words and actions of love are heard by others? If we are to be the value and value of evangelism, we must so acknowledge and accept that this is God at work within us, giving him full control. But then there's a, a third factor to consider. Evangelism without words. If you were, uh, we're not going to do this now, but I'd encourage you to later turn to Luke chapter 8. Uh, and read pretty much the, the, the whole chapter, verses 2 to 56, we see how Jesus brought the good news. He, he not only preached, he demonstrated his power over the forces of nature in saving the fearful disciples. He exercised a demon. He healed a poor woman who'd been hemorrhaging for 12 years. And he raised J uh, Jairus's daughter from the dead. Clearly he brought the good news by word and deed and not by word only. And just like last week when we considered discipleship, we start with who we are and what we confess to be and outflowing from that is what we do. It can't be the other way round. Paul, in similar fashion, describes how he has been used to make the Gentiles obedient by word and deed. By the power of uh, miraculous signs and wonders and the power of God's Spirit. And as a result, and I have fully proclaimed the good news about the Messiah, he writes in Romans 15, verses 18 and 19. You know, some warn that... Uh, such definitions are dangerous, opening the door to a, an overemphasis on the social dimension of the gospel, to the exclusion of the spoken message. Indeed, they can be, I would argue, uh, a complete evangelism will include verbalised gospel and compassionate action. Balance between the spoken message of the gospel and the acts of compassion and wonders of, of the supernatural are necessary. Although different situations may sometimes call for more emphasis on one aspect over the other. What is clear is the, 
the biblical mandate remains. And Paul expresses it in 1 Corinthians chapter 9 uh, like this, to become all things to all people so that I may be all so that I may by all means save some. And again, reflecting on our current situation, those acts of compassion at the moment are at the forefront of what we're doing for the families in the community who are struggling in this pandemic. But that doesn't stop us being able to share the good news and hope of Jesus um, in this way, simply by giving out lots and lots of copies of The Kids Alive, a good, new, nourishing Christian comic that the young people will be able to see the work of Jesus in. So friends, we are all called to be evangelists, placing the need to share the gospel in words and in deeds. The good news that is that Jesus, we, the good news that in Jesus we are saved from our sins, but also to go and follow the Holy Spirit to work in and through us so that others may know the same amazing grace that we've encountered. Or as one writer on the topic of evangelism put it, if we are sometimes fixated on a narrow gospel around what we're saved from rather than what we're saved for, we don't fully fulfil God's commission. Evangelism is one of our values. We must be ready to share the good news of hope and grace by yielding to the Holy Spirit whenever and wherever we can. Freely you've received, now freely you must give. And fill me up and send me out, Lord. These are words that will echo through this next song, giving us time to reflect. Send us out, Lord, to be evangelists of your great and gracious news, in word and in deed. Will you be an evangelist for Jesus? What will that look like for you? Fill us up 
and send us out. Fill us up and send us out. Fill us up, send us out, Lord. Fill us up and send us out. Fill us up and send us out. Fill us up and send us out, Lord. Fill us up and send us out. for your strength and guidance. We pray for the Holy Spirit's blessing and anointing. And we pray, Lord, that you will give us those opportunities to share the good news of grace and hope and light in a world that so desperately needs to hear the gospel message. closing a song we use for testimony time so often well today we use it to conclude our worship and to send us out into the world with the challenge to go and be the good news in our families and neighborhoods our communities and our world i want to tell what god has done through christ his well beloved son how my poor heart he sought and won can you wonder that i want to tell it I want to tell what God can do for sinners like me and you, of sins washed white and garments new. Can you wonder that I want to tell it? And that great chorus, I want to tell you what the Lord has done, what the Lord has done for me. He lifted me from the miry clay. Oh, what a happy day. I want to tell you what the Lord can do, what the Lord can do for you. He can take your life as he did mine and make it anew.
and let me share this benediction with you just now. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you, wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning and God bless.